Hey legends, welcome to the next video on technical and allocative efficiency. Uh, this is a pretty important concept which we will extend upon when we go into next year's learning, uh, but we're just going to start with two types of efficiency in economics. So what is efficiency? Let's start with this. So this word efficiency all relates to the way that we allocate scarce resources. So it enables us uh, to look at different goals for decision makers in government and business on how we allocate our resources with different goals in mind. There are multiple benefits that come from how we allocate resources. It's not just one thing. And so as a result, there's multiple ways um, and multiple goals and benefits that we can have to study on how we allocate our scarce resources, two of which are going to be technical and allocative. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is technical efficiency. All right, so when we think of the word technical, I want you to think of like factories and, and, and robots and trying to make stuff for the most efficient way possible. And so the key features of technical efficiency is allocation of resources which has the highest output with the lowest cost. So I like to think of this as we're squeezing as much as we can from the wet, oily rag of the economy. Yeah, there's not a drop left when we're getting absolutely everything out of our economy. This relates to concepts of the production possibility frontier that we've learned before, okay? If an economy is operating on the production possibility frontier, it would mean that we have maximized our technical efficiency, right? There's no wastage. When there's no wastage, what does that mean? Well, it means there's the highest output and lowest cost. So when we think about ways in which technical efficiency can be pursued, well, anything that either increases output the amount of stuff that we can make or lowers the cost of production is going to increase technical efficiency. And in your answers, um, all you need to do is show how a particular policy or a particular um, factor is going to do one of those two things. You show how it either enables businesses to make more stuff or show how it, it lowers the cost of production for businesses and you're going to prove how technical efficiency is improved. So we've got some examples over here on the right hand side of um, events that would improve technical efficiency. So the first one here is a government policy that lowers minimum wage rates. And you might think, well, that's a terrible thing if people are earning less. But if we're just looking at technical efficiency and in this way we allocate resources to achieve highest output and lowest cost, well, this lowers cost for businesses. And so therefore that will improve our ability to achieve technical efficiency. Secondly, you might have a government policy that reduces the amount of tax that uh, businesses need to pay or companies specifically need to pay. That's going to lower their cost of production and then so therefore that will move them closer to technical efficiency. Generally speaking, whenever a government is going to tax a business, that will worsen technical efficiency. In an ideal world, if we only were pursuing technical efficiency with no other goal, we wouldn't have any government intervention. We would just leave it up to the markets to try and get as efficient as they could to the detriment of whatever negative consequence would come from it. And you can kind of see from that first example how that could be quite bad for society. If government said, oh, you know what, just pay whatever, pay workers or whatever you want, that could have real significant negative impacts on society. And that's why technical efficiency on its own is not the only way that we use um, to measure the success of our allocation of resources. And that's why we also have allocative efficiency because allocative efficiency kind of balances out technical efficiency. Okay, we're not gonna be the corporate overlords and making our workers work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no rests, no breaks, pay them nothing because we also have allocative efficiency that we also want to do our best to achieve. Because what allocative efficiency is all about is the allocation of resources which maximizes society's benefit. All right. And then secondly, towards the production of goods and services that consumers actually want. So there's two aspects to this definition, just like there were two aspects to the definition of technical efficiency. And this one really does balance out the technical efficiency. Okay, so as an economy, uh, and for those that work in the decision making aspects of the economy and government. We've got to make sure that yes, while well, we've got to try and pursue technical efficiency to, to get productivity gains and lower cost of production and make us price competitive and all that kind of stuff, but we can't do it to the extent that our people are miserable. 
and they're working more than they've ever done before and they've got no leisure time or no time with their families. And then so how we improve allocated efficiency is anything that will increase non-material emissions. And so some examples of that might be the government might impose a tax on pollution. All right, and so you think, oh, we, we said before, anything that's a tax would generally worsen technical efficiency, and that, that policy would worsen technical efficiency. And governments would, Im, would uh, put in or implement a policy like that to achieve allocative efficiency, even if it means technical efficiency will worsen. It's just a balancing act. They're gonna, what's good for one will worsen the other and vice versa. Another example might just be government spending money on public parks. That does absolutely nothing for technical efficiency, but it's nice and people like it and people want to live in places that are nice to live in. And so that kind of policy would improve allocative efficiency. And then finally, a law that might prevent misleading advertising. This one links into the key feature that it's uh, the allocation of resources towards goods and services that consumers actually want. Governments would put this law in to help achieve allocative efficiency, to help it to look after the well-being of their citizens. If the government wasn't uh, going to intervene and companies could lie and check their way through and sell you all kinds of dodgy stuff, that'd be great for technical efficiency, wouldn't it? Because that'd be the best allocation of resources, the most output from resources you have. But the government realises that it's more than that. You know, you've got to not only have a productive economy, but you've also got to look after the well-being of your citizens. So, benefits of these two. Generally speaking, it all comes down to living standards. So anytime you're going to talk to a benefit of this, you've got to get to living standards. But how you get there is different between technical and allocative. So for allocative, we will start with lower costs yeah, as our way. So if we improve technical efficiency, the way we're going to do that is by lowering costs. Now, if businesses have a lower cost of production, well, that means they can also lower their selling price. And if they lower their selling price, then consumers have more money to buy other things, and then so therefore their access to goods and services will increase, and then their overall material living standards will increase. And then on allocative efficiency, um, we have an increased production of beneficial goods and services. So let's say there's a tax on those polluting companies. What that means is there's going to be less resources allocated or dedicated to harmful goods and services, goods and services that actually harm society, cigarettes, weapons, high polluting industries, things like that. And so with those things, uh, when there's less resources allocated to those harmful goods and services, well, there's an overall improvement in the quality of life for consumers uh, and society, and so therefore there's an increase in non-material living standards. So something like the government paying for Medicare. So when you go to the doctor and the government will pay for a large majority of that fee, that's terrible for technical efficiency. That worsens technical efficiency because there's a, there's a concept called distorting the allocation of resources. If we only pursued technical efficiency, the government would just step back and we probably wouldn't even have a government, to be completely honest. But the government does spend money on healthcare because they realise that has wider benefits for overall society and to start well. So to summarise, efficiency is all about ways to allocate resources. And if you're going to define types of efficiency, I want you to start with um, an allocation of resources, which, and then go into those two concepts that make up each of the types of um, uh, uh, types of efficiency. No one type of efficiency is better than the other. We've got to do them all. And next year we're going to learn about two different types. Um, of efficiency on top of these two, but it's all about a balance, okay? We need to pursue all of them at the same time for a fully functioning society and economy. Technical efficiency is all about seeking maximum output with lowest cost, whereas allocative efficiency is all about maximum, maximum societal benefit. Once you get those key ideas through, then you're good to go. So thanks for paying attention, guys, and happy learning.